uh, as an introduction to the use of the symbolic method to describe combinatorial classes while at the same time uh, getting uh, generating function equations uh, for the uh, generating functions of those classes. Uh, we'll look at trees and strings, uh, which provide a rich set uh, of examples all the way uh, from the elementary to uh, some of the most challenging combinatorial problems that uh, have been studied. Uh, so the classic example of the symbolic method is uh, trees. So how many trees are there uh, with n nodes? Uh, where a tree is described uh, recursively as a tree. Uh, this, these are ordered rooted trees. Uh, so it's a node uh, connected to a sequence of trees. Uh, and so uh, these are the small values. There's uh, five different trees uh, of five nodes. And these two trees uh, are different because the order uh, is significant uh, and, and so forth. So uh, these are the familiar uh, Catalan numbers. Uh, and with the symbolic method, we can immediately derive the generating function uh, for the Catalan numbers. Uh, so here's how it goes. So we, we define the class of all trees to be uh, a G. Uh, and then the construction, uh, using the basic operations, we say a tree is a node uh, and a sequence of trees. Uh, it's as simple as that. And just using the transfer theorem from the construction to the generating function uh, that we just described, that immediately says that the uh, generating function has to satisfy the equation z for the node over 1 minus g of z for the sequence of trees. g of z equals z times z over 1 minus g of z. In uh, solving that, g of z minus g of z, z squared equals z. So that's an equation that the generating function must satisfy that we get immediately from the combinatorial construction uh, uh, direct transfer. Uh, now uh, we can solve this one in particular using the quadratic equation. Uh, and uh, in classic analysis, the next steps are to uh, use the binomial theorem uh, to expand that. Uh, which uh, is uh, based extracting the coefficients, uh, and then with some uh, a little bit of uh, algebra, uh, we can uh, get down to the uh, result that g of n uh, equals one over four n minus two two n choose n, uh, and then we can use uh, classic analysis Stirling's approximation uh, with again uh, quite a few calculations to finally get down to the result. Uh, that the number of trees is asymptotic to uh, 4 to the n minus 1 over square root of pi n. Uh, and again, these types of calculations are what we covered in analytic combinatorics part 1, uh, if you're not familiar with them. If you are familiar with them, you know that uh, there's a fair amount of calculation uh, involved here. Uh, and again, uh, what we're going to learn to do in the second part of this course uh, is to use complex analysis, in this case singularity analysis, to immediately extract the asymptotic result. Uh, so uh, that's uh, what, what we're going to talk about later. Uh, for this lecture, uh, we're going to look at lots of examples where uh, we just stop at the generating function equation. So that's uh, our goal is to use a symbolic method to derive generating function equations. Uh, that's what we're going to be talking about for the next couple of lectures. Uh, and then we'll go into how do we get the asymptotic uh, results out. Uh, now, a, a very standard paradigm for the symbolic method and that uh, really helps to explain or helps you to understand its power uh, is, is this idea of just we use fundamental constructs to uh, define things that are, are quite simple uh, and intuitive. It almost seems too simple. Uh, even trees, uh, it's an extremely simple construction that uh, gets us down to the result that we want. Uh, and there's some, there, sometimes they're very trivial uh, or elementary, but uh, at least we can check that uh, they confirm our intuition and they indeed work. Uh, and we'll see plenty uh, of examples of that. Uh, but then we can compound the constructs and uh, immediately build up uh, more complicated kinds of structures. Uh, there's lots of possibilities. The uh, set of combinatorial constructions uh, really is a, is a language that uh, has uh, unlimited uh, possibilities. 
Uh, and it turns out that even with the simple ones we've described, we can get lots of classic combinatorial objects uh, that have been described, uh, that have been studied uh, in great detail. We can easily describe them with the symbolic method and get uh, equations that the generating function satisfies. Uh, and that what these constructs do is kind of expose the underlying structure in some way uh, and then reflect that information in the generating function equation. Uh, but uh, a lot of times we're just exploring one path to uh, a known result for, uh, again, uh, the natural combinatorial objects, a lot of them uh, that we're going to look at today. Uh, but the main point is that we can study variations uh, that uh, where uh, we don't, uh, where we try other possibilities, uh, we have restrictions on things and so forth. And this is what comes up in practical uh, applications and there's an unlimited number of possibilities. But the structure that we learn from the fundamental and compound c constructs uh, just uh, follows right through uh, and uh, we get results that uh, really we couldn't uh, even consider approaching uh, otherwise. Uh, and that's a very standard paradigm uh, that we'll see in application after application uh, for the symbolic method and for analytic combinatorics. It's a calculus for uh, the study of quantitative properties of large combinatorial structures. Calculus means that really we have unlimited uh, possibilities once we understand the uh, basic operations. Uh, so just in the context of trees, uh, let's look at a few variations, just a very few variations on a theme. Uh, so we said a tree is a node in a sequence of trees. Uh, another variation is to say, well, uh, each node uh, can uh, have either zero or two children. Uh, that's called uh, a binary tree. Uh, and again, uh, immediately you can write down a construct that's a variant on the basic construct uh, that says a binary tree is a node in a sequence of zero or two binary trees, and you can construct things like that. Uh, and that immediately gives the generating function equation, t of z equals z times 1 plus t of z squared. Or we can uh, do a variation where we consider uh, multiple node types. Uh, for example, suppose we want to distinguish the nodes that have zero children from the nodes that have two children in a binary tree. Uh, this is important in computer applications where binary trees are used explicitly as data structures to uh, support fundamental search uh, algorithms and operations. Uh, so in that case, we're working, we start working with uh, different uh, uh, atomic uh, elements uh, to build up our combinatorial class. Uh, the internal node is the one that we consider to be of size 1, so its generating function is z. External nodes we consider to be of size 0, so their generating function is z to the 0 or 1. Uh, then we use a construction with both types of nodes. Uh, so a binary tree is either an external node, node with zero children, or a binary tree uh, with an internal node and a binary tree. That's a node with two children. That, uh, with those definitions for what the atoms are, again, from the uh, basic transfer theorems, immediately transfers to uh, uh, again, an OGF equation, uh, t of z is 1 plus z, t of z squared. Uh, or uh, we could enumerate by external nodes and switch the sizes, uh, and then in that case we get t of z equals z plus uh, t of z squared. Uh, and it turns out actually that all of these generating functions are related and related to the uh, Catalan numbers. Uh, and there's uh, interesting things that we can learn combinatorial, but combinatorial from this manipulation. But uh, for the present, uh, the point is that uh, however we want to specify it, uh, it's very easy to get uh, the generating function uh, that enumerates uh, all these different types uh, of trees. Uh, so there's many more variations uh, that have been studied, and uh, many of these are talked about uh, in the book. Uh, and there's trees are so fundamental, there's other ways to look at them. Uh, so gambler's ruin paths, uh, or context free languages, or triangulations, and all sorts uh, of other combinatorial structures uh, are equivalent to uh, tree structures. Uh, so these basic kinds of operations uh, are going to lead to generating function equations that help us enumerate a very, very broad variety of combinatorial structures. 
Uh, so these are just uh, some examples. Uh, ordered tree we just talked about, uh, or binary tree, uh, or there's a thing called a unary binary tree where you allow nodes to have zero, one, or two uh, children. Uh, or you could have ternary or four-way trees uh, or uh, whatever else you wanted. Uh, there's a thing called bracketings, uh, which is a famous problem of Schroeder, uh, where uh, we allow, we disallow unary nodes. It's the opposite of unary binary. Uh, it's, a node has to have either zero or uh, greater than two children. Uh, and that's related to a number of ways you can uh, parenthesize uh, in variables. Uh, and again, each one of these equations immediately translates to a generating function equation, uh, and they're all different. And in fact, you can have arbitrary restrictions on uh, what the, uh, <coughs> uh, how many children uh, a node can have, uh, and for any set, then you can uh, get a generating function equation uh, that describes uh, the trees that uh, have those kinds of restrictions. Uh, and there's plenty, uh, there's applications uh, for all of these sorts of things uh, and for uh, many more. Uh, so that's uh, an illustration of the idea that we can start with a fundamental construct and get two variations that help us study uh, a broad variety of, uh, of uh, th things that are structurally uh, similar. Another example of that is strings. Again, we start with a very basic fundamental construct, uh, say the class of all binary strings. Well, a binary string is either empty or it's a zero or one bit followed by a binary string. Uh, that immediately gives uh, an OGF equation, b of z equals one plus two of z, two of z b of z. Uh, and that immediately leads to the solu solution b of z equals 1 over 1 minus 2 of z, or the number of binary strings is 2 to the n. But then we can have all kinds of variations on that theme. So one is, say, uh, the uh, s class of binary strings that don't have a sequence of p or more zeros. Uh, well, uh, that a string with no sequence of p or more zeros is a string of zeros of length less than p, uh, and followed by, it's either that or it's that followed by a one followed by another string with no uh, zero to the p, just generalizing that same argument. And that immediately gives uh, a OGF equation that the generating function for these strings must satisfy. And then we can find z to the n in the equation, we know uh, the number of such strings. And there's lots of applications where uh, people want to know uh, things of this sort. Uh, and this extends to uh, being able to disallow uh, any pattern whatsoever. Uh, it extends to uh, describing, uh, uh, to enumerating strings in regular languages uh, or in unambiguous context-free grammars and uh, many, many other uh, applications. Uh, and again, uh, start with the basic uh, binary string. Uh, there actually, there's two ways to uh, write down a construction for a binary string. You could also say it's just a sequence of zero or one bits. Either way, you get to the same uh, generating function. Uh, and, or you could say uh, m ary, so m different letters. Uh, or the example I did exclude uh, strings of zeros, uh, or exclude a particular pattern. Uh, we talked about that in detail in part one, uh, lecture eight. Uh, and again, regular languages or context-free languages. Again, starting with the most elementary construction, but then uh, using uh, the operations in natural ways, uh, we can study uh, a broad uh, galaxy of uh, combinatorial structures. <clears throat> That's an introduction to the use of symbolic method for uh, basic structures, uh, trees and strings.